babies. It's Molly. Thank you so much for being here. And thank you for visiting this little autumnal vlog. And I hope that you all had a beautiful equinox and are enjoying the season you find yourself in wherever you are on the planet. So I spent the equinox in the north woods of Wisconsin and it's really a sublime time. Uh, the quality of the air and the light changes and the cool mornings really set in and the leaves were just starting to yawn a bit, just thinking about starting to change. And now autumn is really putting on a show where I live. So I get a lot of questions from you guys about how to properly celebrate uh, Sabbaths or holidays. You know, what rituals do I do? What should be on my altar? And it's a topic that seems to stress people out a bit. <laughs> and I wanted to offer you something else. I wanted to share something else. Truthfully, I don't do elaborate ritual on the actual day of the Sabbath. Um, what I choose to do instead is try to spread out my celebrations over the course of an entire season to really get the juice. And I do this for two reasons. One, it's practical. I have a job <laughs> and a lot of responsibilities and just nine times out of ten a Sabbath falls like smack dab in the middle of a work week, so that's no good. <laughs> I also uh, like to start celebrating a season when it feels like the season has arrived or I notice changes and not just because uh, an app on my phone says it's go time. <laughs> sometimes that lines up with the actual day of the Sabbath, yes, uh, and sometimes it doesn't, and that's okay. The second reason I like to spread my festivities over the course of several weeks is that I think one of the most beautiful aspects of following an earth-focused path is that we get to celebrate things. <laughs> we can enjoy and revel every single day. And celebrating can take the form of formal ritual and altar time or coven time, absolutely. But it can also take the form of pleasure activities, things for fun, planning little trips or activities or crafts and sprinkling it over the course of several weeks. And it could be cooking with seasonal produce and sharing that with people you live with or with your friends. It could be movie marathons, even moving things around in your home, um, making seasonally inspired art, or creating playlists that invoke the feelings of a season where you live. It could be doing work in your community that resonates with seasonal energies, or just going outside and using our artist eyes to really zoom in and observe changes, really engaging all of the senses and carrying that enthusiasm through the duration of a whole season. And when I do this, I really feel grounded in the nowness really connected to a bigger picture, a larger web, and we have the opportunity to soak it all in, to deeply appreciate and live in the music of a season. And that, to me, feels like a truly magical life. So I want to encourage you to give it a try and practice enjoying yourself <laughs> and enjoying the moment and the moments. So tell me all about how you're celebrating the now in the comments. So thank you so, so much for watching and listening. I want to extend a special thanks to all of you who visited the band camp and to all of my gorgeous patrons who make this work possible. So thank you, thank you, thank you. And I wish you all of the delights of the season wherever you are, moon babies. And until we speak again, witch on, witch boldly, and be well. Bye-bye.